a bold decision and broad disagreement. We will be starting all classes for students remotely. I'm not happy about it. Three out of four Denver parents say they wanted their kids in school this fall. I was hoping that they returned to school. Denver schools will start the year online anyway. And this is where community is really going to have to go together and support those families. Tonight, Denver 7 is taking a 360 look at the sudden shift to remote learning and looking ahead at which other districts may follow suit. I was so relieved. I was so happy that they were making a decision that we have been asking for for a couple of weeks now. Teachers among the many voices sounding off about Denver's plan to keep kids home until Labor Day, possibly longer. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Andrew Trujillo. And I'm Shannon Ogden. And for many parents, really, this has been the only question that has mattered for weeks now. Where will my child start the school year? In the classroom or the living room? Well, tonight we know the answer in Denver anyway. The state's largest district today became the first to announce they are starting the school year all remote. In-person classes may start on September 8th. It might be even later. We made this decision um, based on our consultation um, with the experts at Denver Health um, and in considering how we would be best positioned to safely reopen schools and do so effectively uh, so that we don't reopen and then find ourselves having to shut down very quickly. So many perspectives tonight. Parents are split, some thankful for the delay, others wondering how they'll manage working while having kids in the house. And teachers are split too. Now, a vast majority thankful to be starting the year remote. Others say the online learning is just taking a toll on students' mental health. And what about our most vulnerable students? Will they be able to rely on DPS for food and the technology needed to participate in these remote classes? And tonight, we're breaking down all of these perspectives and more. And we begin with Denver 7's Eddie Guajardo, who spoke to several anxious families about what comes next. New data from health experts on COVID-19 led Denver Public Schools to their decision for classes next fall. Based on this new data and guidance, we must shift our plans to delay the start of the school year and continue with remote learning. It's this announcement by DPS that lifted a weight of worries for some parents. My initial reaction was one of tremendous relief. I think it's the only smart decision that we can make at this point. I think it's what takes care of teachers. I think it's what takes care of students. It was a literal sigh. But for Lakeisha Gentry, a mother with three children that attend DPS schools, it adds stress. It's a lot of work having to be the teacher for three kids as well as working a full-time job. A DPS survey where 53% of families responded showed 75% of families initially wanted in-person classes, but near the end, the trends shifted towards online learning, according to DPS. I had overall concerns about their exposure and about exposing, being exposed to a wide variety of, of people who may or may not be infected. And we know that until we have a vaccine, we're just sort of skating back and forth between higher rates of infection and lower rates. The school district is providing students with learning devices and Wi-Fi hotspots, but parents question the quality of learning. I don't feel like they were learning anything. I don't think either one of them are looking forward to going back to online learning, and I think both of them recognize it as a likely necessity. Only time will tell, but one thing is clear. It buys time to implement guidelines parents say they need to keep their kids safe. In the meantime, this isn't easy for a lot of families in our community, and we need to step up and make sure we're supporting each other. Addie Guardo, Denver 7. These numbers may not be surprised, but they are cause for concern. Two out of every three Denver students qualifies for free or reduced lunch, and many rely on the district for all of their meals and have relied on district programs over the past few months. Tonight, the district promised they will continue taking care of those kids. We're still in development, but we will be expanding um, and continuing food services for our families. District leaders emphasize tonight they've spent millions to make sure that needy kids have the technology they need for class as well. And they also called on the federal government to put up additional funding for education. For most Denver educators, it's a sigh of relief tonight. Many were adamantly against going to school in person and spoke out to Denver 7's Gary Broad. I do believe that remote start is what's best to keep everyone safe. While parents and students may be split on going back to school, Denver teachers seem to have a more united front. I was so relieved. I was so happy that they were making a decision that we have been 
asking for for a couple of weeks now. DPS teachers have been voicing concerns going back in person, ranging from sick time, in-person teaching exemptions, and their worries over students wearing masks in the hot buildings. One of the issues that's been constant is the lack of AC and for in some schools, and so that I know that's something that guided their decision. According to a teachers union survey from earlier this summer, nearly two thirds of teachers wanted remote learning. Only 3% were in favor of educating in person. Initially, I was in favor of doing the hybrid model, and I'm also high risk, so I agreed to go back with extra precautions. As the numbers started to change, I started to really regret my decision. The Denver Classroom Teachers Association responded with this statement, saying in part, we appreciate the district's discussion with DCTA around these issues and thank Superintendent Cordova for this remote start decision that keeps our employees and students safe. I think they they made a difficult decision. I wish they would have made that decision earlier um, because parents and the community and educators need to plan for that. Superintendent Cordova says the earliest a remote in-person hybrid learning system could start is September 8th, which may still feel a little too soon. It just gives me and I'm sure a lot of other educators a sense of, okay, I have until at least September 8th to continue to feel safe and know that I'm the one in charge of um, the precautions that I'm choosing to take. In Denver, Gary Broad, Denver 7. Okay, so we know what Denver is doing. The rest of Colorado remains up in the air tonight. Now, we know they plan to go back to school in person next month, and we also know that most of them want to remain flexible at this point. Now, Jeffco, that is the second largest school district in the state, sent us this tonight. This is a quote. We'll be meeting again early next week to continue the discussion. We need everyone, they say, to hold tight and give us some time to weigh options so that we make the best decision. Jeff Coe is currently planning to start on August 18th. Most other school districts are starting either the week of the 17th or the week of the 24th. Adams 14 right now is the exception. They're planning to go back on the 10th. Now, teenagers who return to school before August 15th will be wearing masks. And as you know by now, the state now is requiring masks for anyone 11 and older. The districts will set their own policies for the younger kids. And we'll take a 360 look at the specific question of kids in masks in schools on Monday morning. But tonight we continue our 360 reporting of the mask debate with a look at the way this new mandate is being enforced. The Governor Polis's executive order on Thursday was supposed to clear everything up. Everybody wears a mask and you're in trouble if you don't. But within hours, Colorado's counties were questioning the legality. Washington County is the latest. Tonight, their sheriff's office said masks are not a criminal matter, and they believe the citizens of Washington County have enough common sense not to cause trouble over a mask mandate. Larimer County also announced they won't enforce the mandate. And while Governor Polis says 83 percent of people will wear a mask because of the mandate, Many of you passionately disagree here and are against this. Gary, for one, told us, this is a quote, he thinks it's ironic that the governor exercised his authority here but seemed to be far in the background of the recent peaceful protest. And then Kurt says, can't believe Polis has the nerve to say it hasn't become political. Jay Dorrell says the anti-maskers are just a bunch of grandstanders, writing us tonight to call George Brockler and the Weld County Sheriff, quote, the same cast of characters that opposes everything for their own self-serving reasons. Keep the comments coming. We want to hear from you. 360 at the DenverChannel.com. Temperatures closing in on 100 degrees this weekend. I'll let you know when we finally cool off. Plus, Denver 7 peels back another layer of problems tied to the officers in this picture taken at Elijah McLean's memorial. A challenge for your office. <laughs> yeah. Yes, that's absolutely true. How the national scrutiny about two tasteless photos could have a domino effect on nearly 200 pending felony cases. My first reaction was, really? What the hell are these people thinking? Now is the time to focus on your health. Offering the most experienced vein care in Colorado, Albert Vein Institute is open to treat your vein care needs. We have enhanced our protocols to ensure patient and staff safety throughout your appointment. We even offer